This is the second GCSE video on waves. As we discussed in the first video, waves are energy traveling forwards. Again, if we have a surfer who is just sitting on his surfboard and not moving forwards, not riding the wave, just sitting there, then as the wave comes forward, the surfer moves up. And then as the wave goes away, the surfer moves down again, but he doesn't move forwards or backwards. He just moves up and down. The wave, however, is traveling in this forwards direction. So the particles in the wave are moving up and down. The sea is moving up and down. The sea level is moving up and down. The particles on the surface of the sea are moving up and down. The surfer who is sitting on his board on the surface of the sea is moving up and down. Everything in the water is moving up and down, but the wave, the energy is traveling in the forwards direction. Waves transfer energy. All waves transfer energy. Now in this particular example, and in every other example as well, a wave can have a velocity or a speed. <clears throat> velocity um, is measured in meters per second and so is wave speed meters per second. Um, the faster that wave is traveling inland, the, the higher its speed, and the slower it's traveling, the lower its speed, just like any other object that is traveling. Now, there is a key difference between what is in a wave in an ocean and what would be the same if you had a perfectly still ocean and you threw a small pebble into the ocean. The small pebble would create ripples which may look something like this, as opposed to the large waves of the ocean. There are three ways that this ripple is different from these large ocean waves. The first way is really obvious, is the size of the wave. This distance here, compared with this distance here, significant difference. So. The, the size of the wave, the height of the crest, the top of the wave is called a crest, and the bottom of the wave is called a trough. The size of the crest is called the amplitude. And you've got to be careful because the amplitude is the distance from the peak to the neutral point to the equilibrium point here in the middle, which is where the sea would be or where the water would be if there were no waves at all. So that is the amplitude. The second way that this wave is different is the wavelength. Now you can see that one ripple, it's not very far from the, the crest of one ripple to the crest of the next ripple. Whereas in the sea, it's a much bigger distance between the crest of this wave to the crest of this wave. So we can call that the wavelength. And for wavelength, we use this Greek letter lambda. So lambda is the wavelength. And the wavelength is the, the, one, the, the distance that it takes for one complete wave to pass by. So from trough to trough, uh, sorry, from crest to crest, or from trough to trough. So the wavelength of the ripple is much shorter than the wavelength of the ocean wave. The other thing that's different is how many waves reach the shore per second. So here, if you imagine you've thrown a rock into the sea, you'll get a lot of ripples hitting the shore every second. However, over here in the ocean, you might get one wave every three or four seconds. The number of waves per second is called the frequency, and we give the frequency the letter F. Frequency. 
frequency is measured in hertz, Ooh. hertz, hz, and hertz basically means per second. Hertz means per second. So if a wave has a frequency of 10 hertz, it means for every second, there are 10 of those waves passing a particular point. So there are three ways in which the ripple is different from the ocean wave. The first way is amplitude, the height of the crest. The second way is the wavelength, which is the distance from one peak to another peak, sorry, one crest to another crest, or one trough to another trough. And the third way is the frequency, the number of complete waves that pass a certain point per second. We can relate all these three things with a simple equation. Speed is frequency times wavelength. Another possible way of representing some of these values is by drawing a wave. Waves are usually drawn like this, and they usually have the equilibrium points marked on there as well. Sometimes as a dotted line, sometimes as a solid straight line. On here, we can mark the wavelength, which is the distance for one complete cycle, so trough to trough or peak to peak, or this point to this point, because that's one complete cycle as well. Be careful that you don't accidentally mark here to here, because that's only half of a cycle. It has to go up and then down for it to be a complete cycle. So this whole thing is the wavelength. And we can also mark the amplitude. Now the other thing that we can do, and sometimes you have to do in exams, is compare two waves. So if I were to draw another wave down here, and I was to compare these two waves, we could say, first of all, that the frequency of this bottom wave is higher. There are more waves passing a certain point per second. We can also see that the amplitude amplitude is smaller. And we can also see that the wavelength is shorter. Now it's important to remember units, frequency is in hertz, wavelength is a distance, so it's in meters, speed is in meters per second. Now, amplitude is also a distance. It's a distance of the, this particle, the maximum distance that that particle travels. So amplitude is also measured in meters. Now, there are two types of wave, and they have two different names. The one that we have been talking about so far in water is called a transverse wave. And a transverse wave, as you remember, the particles move up and down, and the wave moves that way. So the way that we describe a transverse wave is that the vibrations, these ones moving up and down, vibrations, are at right angles, to the direction of energy transfer. Vibrations are at right angles to the direction of energy transfer. The energy is being transferred this way, but the vibrations are up and down, perpendicular, right angles. The other type of wave is called a longitudinal wave. Now, a longitudinal wave is a little bit harder to draw, 
but a longitudinal wave, the vibrations are parallel to the direction of energy transfer. Now, a longitudinal wave looks something like this. And the wave is still moving this way, but instead the particles are vibrating forwards and backwards. I'm going to try and show you that with a slinky. If you keep your eye on a particular particle, such as this one with the red tape, you can see if I put a transverse wave, you can see that the particle is moving up and down and the energy is moving from the right to the left. So from this side, I'm moving this hand and it's being transferred over to this hand. If I move this hand, then it is transferred the other direction, but still the piece of red tape moves pretty much perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer. Now a longitudinal wave is more like this. You can see I'm still passing energy along the slinky, but this time the piece of red tape is moving parallel to the direction of energy transfer. So we say that transverse waves, which look like this, the vibrations are at right angles to the direction of the energy transfer, and a longitudinal wave like this, the vibrations are parallel to the direction of energy transfer. There are two words you need to know about the longitudinal wave. As you can see, the particles here, the vibrations here, cause the particles to be very close together. And we call that an area of compression. The particles here are much further apart because of the wave and we call that an area of rarefaction. Those two areas alternate as you go along the wave, compression, then rarefaction, then compression, then rarefaction, and then compression. Now the last thing on this video is examples of each one. And the classic example of a transverse wave is light. And a great example of a longitudinal wave is sound.